Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm Ostrich Vox, and in 2016, I tried to prognosticate the powers of the diamonds. I found it fascinating to keep a video catalog of the different abilities found in the gem matriarchs. The following year, in 2017, I made an updated version working off what we had after the Steven Universe Wanted event. Now, here we are. Season 5 of Steven Universe all said and done with a movie on the way. Since we're in the midst of a hiatus, have more information on the diamonds than ever before, and officially in the one year anniversary anniversary of Steven Universe Heart of the Crystal Gems, which saw our heroes face off against the diamonds and reunited, which I want to do a special breakdown of on the one year anniversary, I thought it would be fun to give a complete assessment of the diamonds abilities, including some further speculations on what their powers could be. Side note, rewatching those previous two videos in preparation for this one really had me realize how much this channel, its content, and I as a person have evolved over the years. How grateful I am to have all of you here watching the videos we make so thank you it really means a lot also because of the nature of YouTube recently if we can get this video the 4,000 likes it'll help it fare better in the algorithm I hate to ask in the beginning of the video and if you want to wait until you watch all of it decide if you liked it or not I'm more than fine with that without further ado let's get this party started with some real-life influence the safety hazard diamond this is something we discussed in our previous iteration of this installment but if you look just about anywhere in public you may see said diamond that shares a striking resemblance to the Diamond Authority insignia, right down to the colors, except with red instead of pink. The thing about this is, each section of this diamond reflects some of the abilities found within Steven Universe and their diamonds. The blue represents a health hazard, and while that has more to do with physical health, a lot of Blue Diamond's abilities are rooted in mental health, forcing her grief onto others. The yellow is for instability, shock and heat may detonate, and yeah, electricity, which which can be associated with Yellow Diamond signature move. Red is a fire hazard, and we know gems under Pink Diamond's court, such as Amethyst and Jasper's, possess some form of fire abilities. And white is a specific hazard. Radiation, for example. While this one's a bit harder to apply to White Diamond, you could argue there's no other diamond like her. She's in a league of her own. So yes, I don't know if you want to interchange specific for unique, but it's that kind of stretching that really ties theories together. Beyond that, somewhat science-y mumbo jumbo, let's go through each particular diamond and run through the abilities we know they have and the abilities they might have, starting with Yellow Diamond. I believe Yellow Diamond is the most formidable in battle. Not only does she lead homeworld armies, but whereas Blue and White Diamond have abilities that are more specific to gems, I feel like some of Yellow Diamonds could affect any species. Maybe not to the greatest extent of another gem, but enough to either do some damage or immobilize them so Yellow Diamond can really run in and steal the kill. Right off the bat, it can be assumed that the diamonds could do any of the standard abilities a gem can do, except to an even higher degree. Though it seems as if yellow diamonds abilities have had a direct impact on gem technology, especially when entering era 2. Namely, her signature ability, gem destabilization, or as some may simply refer to it as, good old-fashioned electricity. It seems to run on some form of electricity. Well, you're not wrong. Now, just referring it to electricity kind of undermines it, as we see gems like Garnet can actually produce electricity, but cannot endure what Yellow Diamond has to dish out. Where for gem destabilization ability, Yellow is able to produce electric light currents around her entire body, channeling the current to her fingertips, where she's able to fire away at any gem. When struck by one of these currents, a gem is momentarily stunned before their physical form dissipates, poofing them. As previously mentioned, this ability seemed to be adapted into a gem destabilization a wand that produces strong enough currents to poof a gem entirely, lines of yellow energy coursing through the body, and in some cases, the gem can fall apart like Legos, limb from limb. However, unlike a gem destabilizer, that appears to only knock out gems for a few hours at most, yellow's raw currents causes a gem's reformation to stall much longer, taking over an entire day for Paradigm and Lapis to reform as they were poofed and reunited and didn't reform until much later showing up and change your mind after reforming off screen. In fact, Yellow's destabilization is so severe that the Crystal Gems were unable to reform on their own. Instead, Steven had to awaken each gem through fusion. Not to toot my own horn, but way back in our first part of the Diamonds video, I speculated that Yellow Diamond did have electricity-like powers that function exactly like a gem destabilizer. However, we did not get confirmation until a year after in the episode The Trial. So, uh, go me! Alright, enough of the ego stroke. Let's shift gears to Yellow's aura projection. 
Now, all four diamonds have the abilities to project an aura around them that they seemingly are able to control. Yellow's aura resembles the likes of, well, electricity. Simple enough, but then there's arguably Yellow's most interesting ability, something shared with blue and white. Corruption Induction, and Corruption Reversal. At the end of the gem war, the three seemingly remaining diamonds put their powers together in order to create one last attack on Earth. However, it only caused the gems affected to turn into mindless beasts, corrupted gems. Although the corruption is temporarily reversed in Lex Riddle Homeworld on Nephrite, and later in Change Your Mind, when all three diamonds and Steven are present in Rose's Fountain. I believe each diamond contributes their own role in corruption, yellow diamond causing damage of the physical form, which makes sense, as her signature ability is destabilizing a gem's form. Going back to Lex Riddle Homeworld, Nephrite's body only transformed back into her original form after Yellow took a crack at killing her, going from her animalistic centipede-like state to something as close to her original form as possible. Yellow Diamond also has enhanced strength, speed, and durability. She was able to effortlessly poof Blue Zircon with nothing more than her own finger. Once Steven informed Yellow Diamond that he was technically Pink Diamond, she took it as a grave insult, sprinting to Steven at an incredible speed we have not seen any gem do before. And despite her ship taking a critical hit from the cluster, Yellow Diamond came out unscathed. Again, if you're fighting Yellow Diamond, say your prayers. You're going to need all the luck on your side. All right, closing the page on the elegant Yellow Diamond, it's time to turn the page to Blue Diamond. Now, whereas Yellow Diamond is the most formidable in battle, I believe Blue Diamond is the most unpredictable in battle, as her powers directly correlate with her emotions. And with her emotional state tending to be a bit on the higher side most of the time, you never know what you're going to get. With that said, let's take a gander at Blue Diamond's signature ability, her pathokinesis. Voluntarily and involuntarily, Blue Diamond can spread her aura and grief over a large area, causing any gem to be overwhelmed with whatever emotion Blue Diamond is feeling. Although most of the time, it is a very sad feeling. Now in Lex Riddle Homeworld, Blue Diamond's pathokinesis appeared frequently. Although because she was no longer grieving, her tears of joy and later tears of nostalgia forcefully brought tears to surrounding gems, but they were able to still be mobile and have their own free will. Yet in episodes such as The Trial and especially Reunited, Blue Diamond's pathokinesis and her grief was certainly used as more of a weapon. When overwhelmed by not just her tears, but her grief, the crystal gems were immobilized immediately falling to the floor and shedding tears. Garnet just barely being able to fight through it, thanks to the strong passion that she's comprised of. Lapis Lazuli was also able to overcome this pathokinesis due to simply having some pretty horrible experiences, every downfall causing Lapis to become a stronger being than she was previously. However, while we use Garnet as an example of enduring Blue Diamond's grief, every fusion is not able to withstand Blue Diamond's aura. As the mighty Alexandrite immediately crumbled and fell apart as soon as they were affected by Blue Diamond's pathokinesis. Organic beings such as Lion and Connie were seen to be immune to the pathokinesis, as simply, they aren't gems. Moving on from pathokinesis, something somewhat unique to Blue Diamond is energy projection and manipulation. While we see a form of this with White Diamond, Blue Diamond's is strictly offensive. Blue Diamond is able to mold her energy into different projectiles, namely spears and lasers. Now, we're not entirely sure what the lasers themselves could do, but as we saw in Change Your Mind against Yellow Diamond, Blue Diamond's spears are almost like a concentration of her pathokinesis, as Yellow Diamond briefly shed tears after being hit with one of the spears. As mentioned with Yellow Diamond, all four diamonds have aura projection. Whereas Yellow Orange is more electric, Blue Diamond's aura looks a lot more liquid. Blue was even able to use her aura to break free of lab his chains and reunited. When it comes to corruption, induction, and reversal, it seems as if Blue Diamond's contribution is to the mental state, which makes sense given her character arc and pathokinesis. After Yellow Diamond restored Nephrite's form, Nephrite still communicated in screeches and growls. It's only after Blue Diamond joined in the healing did Centipede have her mental state reformed, being able to speak in complete sentences, although it was really only one sentence, repeated over and over. Blue Diamond also has enhanced strength and durability, as she was able to crush Rose's sword in an instant. Shout
shattering the weapon into pieces. And after Yellow Diamond lost the battle to the cluster, Blue Diamond was crushed by the weight of both Diamond Chips. Yet, she was shortly seen unharmed. And now, although we haven't seen it in the series itself, I do still believe that Blue Diamond is in possession of water and ice powers. Reason being? Well, look at Blue Diamond's court. Lapis Lazulis are proficient at water manipulation. Hydrokinesis. And our very own Sapphire has ice powers. If these two gems from a diamond's court possess these abilities, why wouldn't the diamond herself? And once again, Blue Diamond's aura is liquidy. It reminds me of waves in an ocean. So just imagine Lapis at her strongest, or how Sapphire briefly used her ice powers as an offensive move, and now we're only falling apart. Now crank those up to a complete 10. Yeah, that's what I imagine Blue Diamond can do. And now on to the Queen of Queens. White Diamond. Man, oh man. If I only knew the greatness of White Diamond when I made those first two versions of this installment. Now, we haven't really seen enough of White Diamond in action to determine how she fare in battle during a war or any of the sort, but needless to say, if you're a gem, yeah, you're pretty much screwed against White. She is the diamond of all. A gem powerful enough where a conversation wasn't even up for debate. Yeah, she's in her own head, but let me tell you, it's a very strong head. White Diamond's signature ability is Mind Control, or if we want to give a fancy name for it that's also grounded in real life geology, we can use a term coined by our friend Leah over at the channel Toon Ruins, Bleached. White Diamond is able to fire beams of light out of her eyes, which makes contact with another gem's gemstone. This attack removes a gem's color, or bleaching it, leaving it nothing but black, white, and gray. Once bleached by White Diamond, a gem is under their influence and complete control. Control. Their movements are dictated by White Diamond. Their speech is dictated by White Diamond. Their words are her words. Their voice is her voice. And any feelings that White Diamond feels, the Bleach Gem can also feel. Evident by the controlled diamonds and crystal gems blushing after White Diamond blushed being scolded by Steven. White Diamond can relinquish control of the gems at any time she pleases. Although those affected in question have no recollection of being controlled by White Diamond, no memory of what happened during that time period, they only can recall what happened moments prior. A subsection of being a Bleach Gem is Power Bestowal, as White Diamond's abilities are given to other gems, such as being able to bleach other gems, as the controlled diamonds and crystal gems also shot beams of light at Pink Steven. They also seem to be able to travel in a gray bubble, which allows them to face through objects and buildings. F seen with quote unquote White Pearl and Yellow and Blue Diamond once they were also bleached by White. White Diamonds or projection was similar to Yellow Diamonds, although it really resembles that of a flare. When it comes to corruption, induction, and reversal, I believe White Diamond contributes memory and permanence. Cryptid gems seem to generally struggle with remembering who they were, their memories, and their cryptid state fluctuating, which lines can be drawn to the blacked out gems who lack any recollection when under White Diamond's control. And although Yellow Diamond, Blue Diamond, and Steven were able to heal Nephrite, the reversal wasn't permanent due to the lack of White Diamond. If the corruption attack was just yellow and blue, perhaps the gems affected would have been able to turn back over time. But because of White Diamond, they were stuck like that until all four diamonds were able to heal them. Now, when it comes to White Diamond's potential abilities, it can be assumed she has enhanced strength, durability, and maybe even speed, as those are possessed by the other diamonds. We haven't seen much of White Diamond in action, so we can't say anything for sure. I believe White Diamond also has possible energy projection, but this really ventures into theory territory, as my deduction is based off Pearl. Now we know Pearl served Pink Diamond, but it's strongly implied that Pearl's creation was overseen by the other three diamonds, the sporting yellow, blue, white, and pink into her color scheme. Pearl has many light-based abilities. It's also believed White Diamond might have light scarring, the ability to permanently scar a gem's physical form, as White Pearl or Pink Pearl has a cracked eye, despite her gemstone appearing perfectly fine. Even after she returned to original state, Pink Pearl's cracked eye remained. Now, the reasoning for Pink Pearl's cracked eye is still unknown, but knowing Steven Universe, we may not get that answer for quite some time. Since White was Pink Pearl's most recent owner, many assume the cracked eye stemmed from White Diamond's abuse. Last but not least, let's go to the other arguably most elusive diamond, 
Pink Diamond. Now we have the most knowledge on Pink Diamond's abilities due to our association of the character as Rose Quartz and her plethora of abilities. Now, Pink Diamond led a war, so while it goes without saying she could be formidable in battle, I believe she's possibly second to Yellow, which is insane considering how many of Pink Diamond's abilities aren't offensive. Now, it's hard to say what Pink Diamond's signature ability is, as again, she has so many, and it's really what you would assume what Rose Quartz's signature ability is. We know Pink Diamond has Phytokinesis, the ability to manipulate and control plants, as Steven was able to create Watermelon Stevens and Pumpkin. However, we should also take note of Rose's Moss from Lars and the Cool Kids. So we know this ability is not exclusive to Steven through some half-human, half-gym shenanigans, but rather something his mother was able to do prior. Pink Diamond also has the ability of Gemstone Creation, as she created seemingly fake shards to stage her shattering in a single pal Rose, convincing enough to startle Steven and disturb Pearl. It's because of this ability that many suspect the Rose Quartz's bubbled in Pink Diamond Zoo are actually fake. We also know Pink Diamond has the ability to imbue life, as again, this is something Steven can do, imbuing life into a pebble in the episode familiar. And while Rebecca Sugar has simply said, pebbles are gems, their gemstones are pebbles, many speculate that all the pebbles we've seen were created from Pink Diamond's own tears. Pink Diamond also has the ability of healing and resurrection as she was able to mend cracked gemstones in the gem war, although under the disguise of Rose Quartz. And it's heavily implied, if not confirmed, that Lion once died of a possible tragic death. And his current state of being pink with an arsenal of abilities was due to being resurrected by Pink Diamond's tears. Pink Diamond also has Regulation of Descent, where she can control the speed and velocity of how high she jumps and falls. This ability is simply also known as Floating, which is the closest thing Steven can get to flying. I mean, there is a distinction. Pink Diamond also has Empathetic Telepathy. Although we're not sure the extent of it and how much it differs from Steven's, Garnet stated that as Rose Quartz, Pink Diamond was able to connect with gems on a deeper level assumably similar to how Steven contacted Lapis Lazuli in the episode Chillated. When it comes to aura projection, we've never actually seen Pink Diamond's aura, but Steven was able to channel the aura and reunite it. Unlike the other diamonds, it's not really visually similar to anything that reflects Pink Diamond's abilities, although you'd think it would be close to flames. While Pink Diamond nor Steven had anything to do with corruption, Steven was able to showcase some of Pink Diamond's abilities and corruption reversal, as I believe Pink Diamond and Steven bring to the table presence. Whereas Yellow Diamond restored Nephrite's physical form and Blue Diamond restored her mental state, Steven was able to calm down Nephrite and snap her out of her little memory loop, bringing her mind to the present, where she completely functioned as normal as long as the Diamonds and Steven had her hand on her until she was fully healed due to White Diamond's possible assistance with permanence. Pink Diamond also has accelerated shapeshifting, as not only she was able to shapeshift and form a womb, being able to give birth to Steven organically, but after being pooped by Pearl, she was able to reform as Rose Quartz entirely, never having to revert back to Pink Diamond. Pink Diamond also has enhanced strength, speed, and reflexes, as again, seen when she's masquerading as Rose Quartz. In the answer, Rose is able to take on three rubies simultaneously, separating a fusion of rubies in an instant. We also also see her completely demolish the controls to Funland and Greg the Babysitter, which sent the ride he was on out of control. Pink Diamond may also have possible electrical interference, as seen in the episode We Need to Talk, as her high emotions cause the music on the radio to stop playing, though this may have been done by the show for just dramatic effect and is now reflective of an actual ability Pink Diamond can do. I also believe she has possible fire powers, as again, Amethyst and Jasper seem to possess such an ability, alongside Rubies, all three gems under Pink Diamond's court. And I'm just saying, they had to get the ability somewhere, why wouldn't it be their own diamonds? As always, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Who is your favorite diamond? Who has your favorite powers? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Vox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. Special thanks to Art with Coda for creating an awesome thumbnail. For more of his wonderful art, you can find him on Tumblr and Instagram at Art with Coda and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Link down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Osric Vox, signing out.